Hello, Internet, so nice to see you. People have strange ideas about music theory. People think that music theory is made of rules, of laws to be followed, otherwise, uh, otherwise I don't know actually what's gonna happen if you don't follow a music theory rule. The music theory police come and knock at your house at night to arrest you. Mm. People also think that theory comes after music, meaning that composers compose music and then the music theorists are just behind scrambling around trying to describe what musicians just did. Well, music theory does not really work this way. Some music theory worked this way, to be precise, but that's not the way we want it to work. So, how does music theory work? Are there rules in music theory? Well, if you understand what I'm gonna say today, anything you learn about music theory is gonna be a hundred times more powerful for you. Now, the problem here is that music theory is different things to different people. As evidence and starting point here, I'm gonna take an old video by Adam Neely, where he said that music theory can be descriptive or prescriptive. I'm gonna say immediately that I think that Adam Sneely's heart is in the right place, but the video, in my opinion, is wrong. It doesn't even work this way, and that's a false dichotomy. But anyway, the idea here is that Adam was making a parallel between music and language, and so linguistic become the analog of music theory. And since there are two approaches in linguistic, descriptive and prescriptive, those would apply also to music theory. The problem is that music is a language, is at best a metaphor, and if you push it too far, it breaks. And in this case, it definitely breaks spectacularly. The thing is, music theory can be used as prescriptive and can be used as descriptive, but there is more to it than that, and indeed, most musicians don't use music theory this way, but they use it in a completely different way. Now, very in brief, the prescriptive approach is when you use music theory to decide what music should be, what is the correct music, what is the best music. It can be used this way, and it has been used this way, and even today music theory is used this way, for instance, in music contests, to decide which one is the best piece of music, or for planning the concert season, because we want, of course, high quality music, and of course, high quality here means that we are using music theory in a prescriptive way, one way or another. I don't think that's the most interesting way of using music theory, and I definitely have my problem with that, but it is a possible use of music theory historically. The descriptive approach, instead, concentrate in explaining what a specific musician is doing or what is happening in a specific piece of music. That's cool, and it's useful too, up to a point. But if the only use we had for music theory was to understand what Beethoven was doing, that would be not as useful after all. Since this specific approach works only when you have a piece of music already written, you can see why some people think that music theory comes after music. Well, all of this is cool, but really not that much useful. I mean, how many of you are writing a jazz or a rock and roll song and thinking, let's see, what would Ludwig do here? Even if you knew all the scale choices in Charlie Parker's solo and in Carnatic music, that's again cool, but it doesn't help much when you're writing your own songs, unless you're writing in a very specific style. A composer, a songwriter, a producer instead think in completely different ways. They think, I have an idea. Now, how can I make this idea sound good, or sound better, or sound different? How can I make this idea longer? I mean, how many times it happens that you write eight bars of music and you want to know how to go from there to a full song? How can I do what I want musically and get away with it? That's how a composer, or a songwriter, or a producer think. It's a completely different set of problems, and it calls for a completely different set of solutions. And the underlying philosophy here is to think of music theory as constructive. That is, to think of music theory as a cross between a cookbook and a toolbox. The cookbook contains a number of recipes that work, that have been tried, but that you can modify at will. I mean, nobody will say here that cooking is made of rules. You can do whatever you want in the kitchen. Having a cookbook, having a recipe book, it's a help to get you started. Then you do whatever you want. 
the toolbox instead provides systems and procedures and ideas that produce results and you decide if a specific tool is appropriate to what you want to do in that moment. Now, before I go ahead, let me specify that even if I call this approach the constructive approach to music theory, this has nothing to do with the philosophy of constructivism. So how does this change the way you understand and use music theory? Well, let's take a very common idea in music theory. You have major and minor scales, and you have chords inside those majors and minor scales. A prescriptive approach will be saying stuff like music that uses only notes in the major key or only notes in the minor key sounds good. Or using the opposite judgment, music that stays in a single key for the whole song is boring. Notice that there is no problem with either of those statements per se. A real red-blooded, dyed-in-the-wool prescriptivist will tell you that those statements have objective truth. It's up to you to decide if you want to use this approach or not. A descriptive approach to the very same idea is to say, some musician compose using only notes in the minor key, for instance, Iron Maiden. Other musicians compose using the minor key, but also using notes that are not in the minor key, let's say Bach or Mozart. Of course, you guys understand that I cannot make a complete list of those two classes of musicians here, so take those as they are examples. A constructive approach will go more or less like this. Hey, I got those seven notes. I wonder what I can do with those. Hey, I got those seven chords, three major, three minor, one diminished. I wonder in how many ways I can put those together. In other words, prescriptive music theory tells you what music should be and gives a judgment of value. A descriptive approach tells you how we understand music and how people in the past have used it. And a constructive approach tells you what you can do with that, and possibly it also makes you do it so that you actually gain experience in using music theory and in writing music. This last part is incredibly important, because without a constructive approach, then exercises in music theory is a phrase that has no meaning. But, of course, the best way to learn music theory is through exercises that give you the sonic experience of manipulating those concepts, those objects, those ideas to make actual music. Let's give another example. Let's talk about voice leading. If you don't know what voice leading is, then click on the link on the top right to one of my videos that gives an introduction to it. It's a very useful idea. A prescriptive approach is what was taught in most university and schools until recently, is that voice leading follow those rules, and those rules must be respected, otherwise they're gonna have bad voice leading. After this comes a long, long list of very complex rules. A descriptive approach, which is a bit more modern, is to think this way. During the common practice era, that is, during the Baroque, Classical and Romantic period, most musicians wrote music following those unspoken, unwritten rules, even if some of them actually wrote those rules down. There might be an exception here and there, but that's what they were doing for the most part. Before and after the common practice era, either there was very little voice leading or the voice leading was done in a different way. Again, that's cool, but you cannot do very much with that. I mean, it's great for grading examinations and creating a whole curriculum and giving music theory degrees all around, but it's not really great for music, right? A constructive approach instead will go this way. If I take one chord and then I play another chord just after that, I have multiple options on how to connect that chords, depending on how I rearrange the voice inside them. Try a few of those possibilities and see which one sounds best to you and is more appropriate to the music you want to make. In other words, a constructive approach gives you the possibilities and lets you make a choice on what works best, while a prescriptive approach comes already preloaded with a kind of a moral sense in music, like this is right and this is wrong, and a descriptive approach come with the weight of tradition, meaning that's the way we've always done so far, and gives you very little indication on how you can do things differently in the future. Of course, it's much harder to write music theory 
from a constructive approach because you have to think more. You cannot rely on the judgment or the experience of past musicians. You have to actually think for yourself. And that's why it's really hard to find some sources of music theory taught in a constructive way. But let's say that ideally we all would like to be taught by people who understand the constructive approach to music theory, whether they call it this way or not. Because those are the people that will help us develop our own creativity and our own music rather than being slaves of the past. That is my vision for music theory and that is honestly, the way I try to teach to my students. In my courses, Complete Chord Mastery and Master of the Modes, I try to teach this way and I give several exercises, which are creative exercises, where I help the students going through the different possibilities that music affords us. And I try to help the student find his or her own voice inside those all possibilities. I like to think that more often than not, I succeed at doing that. But hey, you have to ask my student, I cannot tell this to me myself. But anyway, if you're interested in this kind of approach, then I suggest you have a look at my courses, Complete Chord Mastery, if you want to learn everything about harmony and chords on the guitar, and Master of the Modes, if you're more interested in lead playing and improvisation and being able to improvise over any kind of chord progressions. Those are not books, those are video courses, and the most important feature of these courses are the exercises. You have to do all the exercise, you have to do especially the simple exercises, the one you think you can do already, because when you do them, you discover that there are more possibilities you overlooked the first time. If you are willing to discover what music theory can be in a different approach than usual, and if you want help finding your own voice, then I recommend Complete Core Mastery and Master of the Modes. Click on the links on the top right to check them out. If you like this video and you find it constructive, smash on that like button, don't forget to subscribe and definitely click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any suggestion, feedback, ideas, well, write them down in the comments. I really enjoy reading from you. This is Tommaso Zillio of musictheoryforguitar.com and until next time, enjoy!